you're, you're off the court. Here we Thank go. You. Um, All the shit. So we have a couple minutes before our first Seaside Road. Amy, you had anything you want to um, fill us in on real quick? Well, we could go through the request for minor modification. Okay. If you want. Sure. So this was a pier at 246 Gannett. Yeah. That you approved back in 2016. Yeah, I was going to say it was a while back. It was a pretty involved permitting process um, with a really long. Yeah, yeah. the one that goes off from the yeah. island that um, Adam represented. Yes. Yeah. yeah, if you want to see the plan, but it's a. I remember it. Yeah, it's a really long pier. Long. Yeah. Out to the Gulf. Yeah. And um, with a seasonal float. Yeah. So. Offshore Marine, Mark Stevenson, gave us a call and actually wrote up a description of some changes that he wants to make to the approved plan. They're uh, mostly concerning the materials. Mm -hmm. So the approved was were wood piles, 12-inch wood piles. He wants to go to 8-inch fiberglass. Hmm. Um, and then also they want to modify the float slightly. So I had reached out to Dave Hill with Chapter 91, just uh, wondering whether these were significant enough to do an amendment to the order or whether we could take it as a minor modification. This type of minor modification is not really officially recognized, but at least we're talking about it in a meeting. And so I guess like one of the questions I had was if I was a neighbor and I was expecting one thing and now suddenly they're out there building something slightly different you know, should there be notice to them um, or is this just insignificant I think as far as impacts to coastal coastal resource areas uh, the impacts are getting smaller right right the, the float out is is changing because I, I I think it has to do with the equipment that they're using you know to get in the wood piers you have to have a lot bigger heavier equipment so the fiberglass is lighter easier to install yeah. and I don't think that they are proposing as much river work oh, good. Here, so do we have a is it more than a letter or is there a plan this is no no plan at this point but we could get them to get a plan I don't think that they should revise the plan and then it, and the orders are still open the orders are still open yeah because yeah, we wanted in the five it's less invasive um, and or smaller, yeah. I don't see it. And they're not bothering anyone where that is. <laughs> right. Well, and they, and they should CC the state, too, for the Chapter 91 file, I would. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, we don't want them getting a little out of drum. Okay. Okay. Agreed. So for 620, 61 Seaside, Road, a shed applicant was Paul Turcott, Arbito Russ Engineering. This got continued. Anybody here for that? And the butter. Okay. The applicant? Greg, are you? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, 170. This is 61 Seaside? There's a notice to continue, Frank. Oh, sorry. It no, there is. Oh. Sorry it's about that. So we got a request to continue this to. Uh, Nine must have just come. Nine thirty. Yeah. Okay. So it is. Quick question. Oh, I'm okay. sure they get applications get continued quite often. Mm -hmm. What's on the agenda for tonight is a way to know in advance. Public you could call the office um, before the meeting and just ask. Um, we don't usually send out much, but you're welcome to. I understand it's frustrating, so you might give a quick call um, to the office. By what time? By before four thirty? Yes, on that particular project, we received the notice in the mid to late afternoon. So yeah, so yes, I mean, I people can just did it today. people can actually yeah. request a continuance here this evening if they want to. So you could show up and then they could still request it to be continued. But if they were required to submit additional provisions or something, is there a deadline? We would like to get the information ten days, one week, one week prior to the meeting. So. All right. All right. Now, one more question is, 
But we can't discuss it if it's being moved on to continue. All right. So, part of the commission? Sure. Okay. So. Well, why don't you take that up with the with the agent? We got a lot of hearings tonight. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, and your name was? Uh, Peter Mack. Thank you, Peter. I'm going to continue it. Okay, Frank. I make yep. a motion to continue 61 Seaside to September 30th at 620. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 36 and 36 R. Bailey's Causeway. Looks like we have a request to continue those. Yes. Both of those to September 9th. Right. I make a motion to continue 36 Bailey's Causeway, 36 R. Bailey's Causeway to September 9th at 620. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Um, 119 Kent Street. And this is a continuation of a project. existing dwelling here that was taken down about a year ago in the middle of the site. Our proposal is the new home located here. The property itself doesn't contain any vegetated wetlands, but it is in the FEMA zone. Uh, it's in an AE14 zone. Um, the revisions that were requested on this plan included encompassing the entire perimeter of the site with an erosion control barrier, which we've specified as a mulch stock, and we've included the detail of that. We had proposed a paver driveway. We provided a detail here of a paver driveway showing a gravel cross section underneath the driveway. Um, there was additional information provided on the construction entrance. Um, the construction entrance will be shown right here where the, ultimately the finished driveway is going, but the length on that was added um, as a 30 foot length driveway. <coughs> the FEMA certificate was odd. submitted as a yeah. separate document. Oh, and then the foundation plans prepared by a prey design were submitted. Uh, the foundation plans being in an AE zone at elevation 14 require your first floor living space to be a minimum of one foot above elevation 14. We're actually proposing it at 2.2 feet above. We're proposing our first floor at 16.2. Secondarily, the requirement is that the foundation be equipped with flood vents. Um, highlighted in pink here are a total of 11 flood vents that are compliant with the building code and the commission's requirements. Turn it over to you if there's any further. Penny? Um, okay. what, I don't think anyone asked the last time, but this co concrete pad, what, what is that? That was a, I think that was concrete pad that was already out. Yeah, the well, I think it is, but what, what's the pur purpose of that? Does it serve a purpose? Could no, it be removed? It's being, it's being removed. All of the concrete pads out here are being removed. Okay, because so. I don't actually see it. Just the I, I see see the new driveway, but that's good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other than that, I think you hit on everything, Doug. Uh, <clears throat> nothing really. What just what's when there's a. There's an under drain under the driveway. Where, where's the ultimate outfall for that, or so, is that? So the drain itself actually won't have an outfall. Uh, okay. The gravel under the driveway will provide storage. And so it's basically it's leaching. It's it's a leaching. Exactly. Okay. All right. Thanks. That's it. I'm good. Well, no questions. Lisa. No questions. Okay. Nope. Any other comments? 
Is there erosion control around this, Greg, or wh where it? So, you know, we're proposing yeah. it around the oh, entire property line, all the way around. Okay. Just it looks like a tough site to get in and out of, and um, you know, obviously the the construction drive is to get hopefully get some mud and t stuff off of vehicles. Um, is that the practical place to put that? I guess. Um, I mean, it makes sense to put it where the driveway is, but sure. as long as it gets used. Yeah, I think that's the location uh, preferable off of Blanchard as opposed to Kent Street itself. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then it, it'll be crushed stone, so that'll serve ultimately as the, the finished driveway. It seemed like the most practical spot. Okay. All right. Okay, I make a motion to call. Anybody, um, anybody motion. in the audience? All right. I think we vetted this one pretty good the last time. Yeah, we did. I make a motion to close. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Very, very good. Thank you. Um, zero countryway nuts. drainage basin. That's continued. There's a spiel for that. Open. Yeah. So on August 19th, 2019, 625 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws. And section 30700 Town Central Code of Bylaws beyond the application of Bradford Merritt to construct drainage basins with point source within 100 feet of bordering vegetated wetlands associated with a five lot residential subdivision loca location is zero zero country way situated, but there's another interested parties are invited to attend. Okay, and I'm going to make a motion that we continue it to September 9th at 6.20. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Two minutes. What's that? Two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, we got to fill in two minutes worth of time. Back to that here for a second. So if we give that to uh, Chapter 91, mm -hmm. and then we have a decent plan. Yeah. Um, we don't see that there's any big issue. I, I don't see where that would, I mean, we amend orders pretty regularly, especially if they're less intrusive or whatever, so. So not requiring amendment, just accept the modified site plan? I would think so. I think yeah. we could do that. You want us to vote now or wait until you make sure 91's been addressed? I think we could vote, I mean, if they say no, we could just, we send that if we had to. All right, then I'll. Well, I think if you're leaning towards accepting it, then vote now because they're chomping us a bit to get going. We were hoping to have DEP weigh in on it. But I do think we should get a. I've heard of five have them as peers, but some kind of plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some revision on a plan. It's something new, yeah. Right. Um, so I'm going to make a motion that we accept revision. How, how do you want to word it, Amy? Well, you don't have both pages. Just a mar minor modification. Minor modification on um, 246 Gannett Road. Yep. The pier. Okay, second. Do I have a second? Second. Second. One favor. Aye. Aye. Good. Sounds good to me. All right. Um, this is for 86 Humrock Beach. Uh, is that Beach Road? Yes. On August 19, 2019, 6.30 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town Central Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Peter Huey to construct an addition, decks, and new garage on piers, including demolition of existing garage at dwelling Location 86 Humrock Beach Road, situated by this little interest. Parties are invited to attend. Good evening. Hey, Jen, I'm going to recuse myself from this one. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Robert Crawford, um, representing uh, uh, Mr. Huey and his wife, and I believe this is Heidi Kahn. Yes. She's the uh, architect. Mm -hmm. um, basically, this is a 6,000 square foot lot that is on uh, a corner of a passageway that leads out to uh, River Street. Well, mm -hmm. do you have that on a board or anything? I, we I do not know. 
Uh, can we? Sure. Yeah, and if you're, those are your green cards, you want to give those to. Um, I already turned them in. Thanks, Heidi. Want yeah, please. Detailed, yeah. <coughs> if you need some more clips, I have some here. <laughs> Is that enough? Okay. But there's two two more just sitting here from Thank you. That's okay. Well, I, I have a plan in front of me. Okay. I'm more concerned if anybody in the audience is trying to see something. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Yours. Huh? Yours. Yeah. I know. Do we have a foundation? Yeah, you want these? They're um, great to go off the front board. So the process is that uh, that the commission members can ask their questions first, the agent, and then we go to the audience for any input. And we have a number of hearings after this tonight, so I'm going to ask that everybody try to keep it to the point and keep it applicable. So, Penny? Um, let me see. The wooden deck out front is much bigger, but I what I really like is you have it away from the seawall where the existing one is touching the seawall, and that, that's a plus to me. Um, I really... Don't where you had an open deck, you're going to have addition, posed, open deck is where staircases were in the mid here. And the garage, I like the garage, the ramp up, we did that down the street. But so they'll, be, about yeah, like yeah, no, but they'll, they'll be good. Um, I don't really have any other, any real questions right now. Okay. Richard, uh, Doug? 
Um, question more, really more for the the commission on something like this. So that's an existing uh, lot with dwelling and garage on a barrier beach. So there's expansion of um, impervious areas. Do we deal with stuff like that, or is this something you would routinely that we routinely see and approve? The um, garage is bigger than and the the expansion of the the addition is going to put a roof on there. So do we do we have to do we normally take things like that into account? Mm -hmm. We do. Um, maybe it's a question. So Heidi, are there gutters on this? Uh, um. we, do, we will plan to have gutters. And, and the garage is actually an improvement. It's currently a slab on grade. No, we I know. It. Yeah. So, so yeah. It'll be on piers. Yeah. For, for flood water, right. And the water right. can go under it. Um, a lot of the covered porches that we're filling in already have solid roofs. Mm -hmm. um, we're, again, we're trying to get that, that deck that's closest to the ocean up. Yeah. And so anything that's sitting on it isn't going to be floating away or contaminating the ocean. It's all above. So our goal was really to get off the dune and get the proposed work kind of above and using the dune footprints as much as we can. Yeah. I have some photos of it help showing the house. Mm. Sure. Yeah, we always like photos. And just the front back so you can see, you know, the porches that we filled in. Thank you. Do you have a photo of the garage as well? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> so, so this is what they're going to... This is the garage. Yeah. Fill in the... Yeah. So gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this part. All right. Yeah. I'm just being closed. <coughs> it's not the house I thought it was. I like it. I, I, I love the deck being the away from the seawall. That's what we're trying to get people to do. The huge benefit is that it's raised. It'll be on the well, well, this is the. Raised. This you must be the garage. Of it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, so that. that's the one that's. It's not in good shape right now. No, it's yeah, in okay. poor shape. Right, it's right. Okay, now I'm. Okay, that's what's. Yeah, so it's you know, several hundred square feet that we're eliminating. Are you sending questions? I am okay. Okay, so. Uh, I guess my question in reference to the garage is what is the garage going to be used for? A car garage to get the cars off the. Uh, okay, I understand that. So, what is going to be the slope on terms of raising the garage up? That's frequently an issue that we deal with. Do you have a um, ramp? Do you have a percentage yeah. for your ramp? Percentage? Is it the ramp that you're worried about? It's How far? Out? How far out it might come into the to the street or the passageway? It's staying on the property. Okay. There is. Um, look here. The property line is here, and mm -hmm. we are a few inches off the property line. Mm -hmm. So the garage. So that's the actual um, ramp, and we're keeping the garage 14.45 back. So the garage is 16.6, right, and that. the grade right here is 14. So it oh, looks so like it's about two and a half feet. It's a little bit crazy. Feet. No. Yeah. It's so two and a half feet in. We'll get the cars out of the drive, which is where they got parked now. Did I figure that out right, Doug? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, and, and currently that garage isn't really used a whole lot, is it? Well, it's storage right now. Just storage, storage. but not the cars. Am I correct? You put your car in. So one car can okay. go in there. But, right. there, you know, there is no basement and the attic has a very tight scuttle so there's thank you i'm good for now i'm going to recluse you so yes sir no i mean the fact that it's all going to be elevated uh, how how high is the garage the bottom, the bottom of the ground. Couple of two, two and a half. Off the ground. Yeah. Two, two and a half feet. Two and a half feet. Yeah. Yeah. Just talking about that. And that's why there's the ramp in front. If you look at the site plan. Thank you. Jen. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I'm just trying to imagine water flow. And so it's great that it's being raised and 
this is just me not having seen some a ramp project yet do you like block in the sides to make it more stable I'm just not familiar with how, how we construct it or, or yeah like how is water are the sides of the ramp blocked in so it becomes stronger we or have breakaway panels but the water would go <coughs> under the typically under the okay ramp so it and can it would, so water can go through okay leave space in between because you don't want it to be, it's not gonna be solid. Kind of right and the water can go under it and kind of through the ramp okay I um this one down my mine that I can show you. Oh really? On Bayberry, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know that one. It's a Hermann. It's yeah. Ramp. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. much steeper than we're proposing. Yes, it is pretty steep, yeah. but he didn't but have a lot of room. Yeah. It works, yeah, and that's what. And they good. can get their car there, and that yeah. floods more. Than oh, <laughs> we all know that. But yeah, there's, there's yeah. A, a few around, and there's actually one not far down the street from mm -hmm. this. On the ocean. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amy. Um. Just a second. Okay. So the NOI came in. It was missing some information. So I've been working this week to try to get it complete. And um, the last d day or so, we did receive additional information. So we did receive the structural drawings and. Some lots of interest on the project so we had quite a few abutters come in asking questions about the project um, some of whom I think are here tonight um, also received elevation certificate but it's from 2004 so we're going to request an updated elevation certificate still um, and it triggered natural heritage review by endangered species we have that they filed and they requested that they were to file, but I don't have the findings letter yet, so we're still waiting pending the findings letter from them. Um, clearly, it's it was the Hummer Rock, Develop Barrier Beach, Coastal Dune. Um, I think you're gaining flood compliance, which I think is, is a positive, but there is still some, some missing information. But we had uh, a butter's right comments, which you've all been forwarded the different abutters comments. We had 15 or so come in out for in favor of the project, and then we had uh, an attorney and a couple of other people or, or so come out um, against the project. So, um, so there's yeah. cer certainly there's opinions on what should happen sure. at this property. Okay. Right. I'm going to open it up to the audience, and my quest request is that that the questions or comments be brief and to the point, that they be applicable to this project. I know that there's been past projects. That's not what we're here for tonight, so this is for the project that's at hand. Um, and basically get a question. We'll, we'll try to answer those or let the applicant answer them as best as, as possible. But we have m many other hearings this evening, so I want to take this and move it along as quickly as we can. So if somebody's already asked the question or made a point, I don't think it needs to be repeated. All right. So anybody want to start comment a question? Yes, ma'am. And you want to state your name and address, please. I'm Jody Walls from 3600 Street, And I have seen a massive amount of education from their property moved. And when the storm comes and the ocean gets high, it does not go down the passageway like it should. It all ricochets to the left, to the right, goes all over different people's property. Not as it should go down the passageway. This should be ratified before any alterations or permits should be allowed on this property until that is taken. And in the pictures that we sent in, you can see where all the alterations. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Hmm. Yes, sir. I'm Doug Schelling. I'm a couple of houses down the sea wall. Your address, please, sir? 37 Hawthorne. Thank you. We're living left with people. We're not here to 
thwart this project, but we're bothered by what's happened in the past, despite what you said, Frank. Uh, the conditions from the prior project have not been met. And as Joni said, the uh, material that's been removed, pictures show it, from uh, Mr. Huey's property into the road, causing adverse conditions. It diverts a large amount of water toward my property along the seawall and it's doing damage to me. And then it ricochets across the road and hits uh, Jamie Ford's house, Joni's house, and uh, Hallis' house. So, you know, the conditions are set and met and, and uh, administered, but it seems to me as well we need to correct the uh, the, uh, the efforts that, that have not complied with the past conditions before we move ahead. Again, let him let live. Let him build his property, but let's fix the problems. Open up that road and get all that uh, debris out of the road so no. the water can flow where it did for years. And so people here. down that road can enjoy yeah. the access but that they had to the beach for decades. Wait in on that. Anybody else? Anybody. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Jack Sullivan. I'm the brother of Bill Sullivan. I'm from Marshfield. Yeah. He's asking to represent him. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, since and what's the address for Mr. Uh, Sullivan? 19, 19 Schooner Way in Marshfield. Okay. And, and Mr. This? Sullivan's? 85. 85. I'm Rocky's Okay. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> you know, just about who I am. And did you get that, by the way? Okay. I'm retired from FEMA, not representing FEMA, worked for 21 years there in the mitigation department, eight years as the environmental compliance officer for New England, and, uh, you know, kind of familiar with what goes on or what has been going on there. Talking to Gil, uh, you know, these are the conditions or, or things that he has, you know, brought up. Uh, the, pl the plans call for considerable construction in the A zone. Is that a coastal A zone or is it just an A zone? Coastal. It's a coastal A zone which is subject to V zone requirements. So, uh, you know, we're talking about a very, as you, f I, I feel strange talking to you guys because you know what it is. It's a very vulnerable area and there's a large amount of construction being put into this coastal A zone and it ends up being fodder for a storm. That particular area hasn't been hit with a big storm. They get lots of little storms, but they're always one storm away. Again, you guys all know that, know that business. Uh, even when a structure is built to NFIP compliance, even when it's built strictly to the compliance and it's all adhered to, there is still a huge risk for every structure that's in that coastal A zone. So this is putting more construction into your coastal A zone uh, that's at risk. I know you're a community rating system community, and I know you have community assistance visits from FEMA and MEMA. And all of these things, I know you don't want to talk about old stuff, Frank, but uh, going down the line, Doug. Well, what we're we here for tonight, we I, have, we I, have a, I know why. I understand exactly what you're here for. Doug mentioned going down, or he asked about uh, impervious ground. Some of the other stuff has to do with some of the questions that other people ask. You can't separate these things. These things are very much connected actions. There's no question that they're not connected actions. So, you know, when you mention about the uh, impervious ground and does it affect it, of course it affects it. Incrementally, very small, but cumulatively in your town, in the coastal A zone, unless you pay attention to each one of these uh, actions that you're being asked to take, then cumulative, it ends up being a big effect on your coastal A zone, although this will be incremental. Going down further, the use of the garage, I think Lisa asked about the use of the garage, I'm not sure. You, you can't control what people put in a garage. You just can't control what's in there. If that garage, something happens to it, there's no telling what, you know, what would be in that garage. Uh, Jen had asked about water flow, and that berm that was put between the houses, you know, on the uh, uh, public right-of-way, 
is a berm, and it has affected the water flow, as Doug had, had explained. And it affects individual houses Can as well as the whole area. Can you show us where this berm, uh, are they proposing a berm? Uh, no. The berm is there. The berm is the there. old one. So, right. you know, and, and again, I know you don't want to hear this, but the applicant himself, you know, that there are things what that... we're trying to... I understand what you're trying to do, but you have floodplain management considerations that you need to take into account. You can't keep separating things and saying, I'm only going to look at this, I'm not going to look at that. You need to look at those things. This is what your job is. Thank you. Well, I, I don't want to be fresh about it, but you're trying to shut it off, Frank. And, I, and it's only a couple now, now, now you, it's I'm only a couple sure more minutes. minutes. We have, and, and I don't know why before us, and we have other people that come afterwards. Right. I'm happy to hear the issues as it pertains to this house, and we'll address them. I'm making notes, and, and we'll, we'll talk about those pieces. So do you want me to stop? Is that the... Yeah. No, but, but I'd like it to pertain to the NOI for this evening. Well, I'm going to go back to saying it is pertaining to it, because you can't separate the two. Okay. Uh, and I guess, you know, there are other... Th besides this, and there are photographs, I think, that were sent to you, and maybe the rest of you have gotten them, of people doing plantings down there. There's a photograph of the way the uh, right-of-way looked before the... Uh, actions were taken on it the fill actions fill was brought into the special flood hazard area completely against regulations you cannot bring fill into a flood hazard area like that it needs a permit it must have had a permit to do it i don't know how that happened but i imagine when people look at that in terms of compliance it's out of compliance i think one of the abutters said and, and both of them said they're not against this project but what they would like is to make things right there you know, go back and get that right. thing straightened out and then take a look at this project the way it has to be looked at. And it'll probably be looked at very favorably. But it ha you can't just put actions on top of actions that uh, are inappropriate. Right. And that's it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Could Frank, can I address one thing there that he said? As long as he, it doesn't take long. No, it won't take long. That passageway, the dune, the one you're talking about, that they did this, they did that. DEP came out and they ruled on that. So we have to go by what DEP said and they said to leave that dune alone. DEP doesn't regulate the NFIP. Excuse me, DEP, it has already been appealed once. I understand, I understand. Can I, can, can I ask a question? Because I'm not privy to the history. Obviously there's a lot of history on this project. What is your suggestion? Well, you're you're saying I've heard two people mean, say that they don't oppose the project, right. but I want to I want to know specifically uh, what you want them to do, and can you point that out on the plan? The same thing that uh, the first person said that you know, put drones to put the uh, the right of way, the public right of way, back to the way it was prior to the inappropriate fill. Okay, what would should, can you point to me the the fill you're talking about? Is that the the, the three? Couple of contour lines up to elevation 16 I with the utility pole in it. Show, this doesn't show here. These show property lines. I would say the fill comes over six eight. I, I haven't measured. Okay, six so it's eight feet. It leaves about somebody had measured and said it only leaves the right of way being three feet as opposed to what we're looking at here. Okay, so what what you're saying there? The issue that you're talking about actually isn't on this plan. No, it's not. No. Okay. No. All right. Thanks. Goodbye. I thought he was talking about this right here. No, That's no. We, we are deep here. You know, this has been a nightmare. Yeah. There's no, this is, I'm, I can see a, a mound here. That's what I would. I thought this was the issue. But well, it's, it's not. one of the many. It's, okay. um, oh, yeah. Please. It right. just. Just one quick point. What our contention, uh, Doug, is that that mound was man made. Nature didn't do it. No, I was just trying to understand what the yeah. mound was, and I, I thought it was where the utility pole is. There's a mound clearly shown on the plan, and he's saying that there's more that's not shown on the plan. So what we're like after is, is a small mound of grass around a telephone pole in our road before his project and during his project, and then he perpetuated that mound to this huge, huge thing paralleling uh, both houses, perpendicular to the beach. Right. And then restricted and added rocks and sand 
into the road on the other side of Amarok Beach Road. I would implore you folks to come out and take a look. It's okay. all man-made. We want that out of there so water doesn't flow into our house anymore. Go ahead and do the project once that's done. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. I needed that. All right. Well, let's, we got hands up and you've spoken, so let's... Yes. This one is Kathy Sullivan, and I'm at 85 on Rock Road. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to show all of you a picture of how this looked in 2005. That's the area between 85 and 86. Nothing is there. And during several winters, more and more was added. Rocks, sand, uh, a fence. The dune fence moves over towards our house by about a foot each year. And there's supposed to be a 20-foot passageway for all the people on Brunswick Street Extension to have access to the beach. Right now, they have about three feet because Peter is supposed to have two feet beyond his house, and we have two feet beyond our house. And then there's 18, 16 feet for people to walk. There's about three feet now for people to walk right through here because all of this has been man-made in the last 12 years or so. And I don't know if everyone else has seen that, but this is a picture of how it was in 2005 between the two houses. No sand, no dunes, no rocks, mm -hmm. all of that. And his plantings being made. <coughs> the more pictures, I would like to take these pictures back with me, but you can see this pretty clearly. That's, there was nothing there, and that's the, the pole. And that, that slat fence has been moved over gradually every single year to keep all that sand right. Oh, I have them on my phone. You do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. But I think that, that picture is certainly the most telling. Mm -hmm. And this is later. Um, yeah, it. probably about the same time some of these, but not too much later. Yeah. But this was 2005. And as you can see, I don't. I wish I had a current picture, and I should have done this. What it is today, and you'd see the people going down the road yeah. have about three feet, and it's very difficult to walk down the road. These are going to stay. Once you bring them up, and they're for the commission, oh, right, we're going to keep fine. them in the file. And keep all of these. I have copies of all of those. Okay. Thank you. But it's difficult for the people on Brunswick Extension to bring their carts and their kids and everything else when they're supposed to have 16 feet to watch the beach. They don't have it. <coughs> Okay. Thank you. And the ocean does come down in a very different way because it now comes down, and instead of coming straight down, it goes right like this. And it's taking away part of our parking that has a, um, you know, uh, it's not sand. It's beyond sand for parking. It's taken that away. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I'm Terry Hughes, 22 Brunswick Street Extension. Um, I've been listening to what was said. I use the passageway every single day to go to the beach. I have no problem getting to the beach. I take my grandchildren that way. We take a wagon. We take chairs. I've been going to the beach since 1986. That has always been a passageway. We've never had an issue getting there. Yes, I'm a, I'm a friend of the Hueys. Um, so yes, I'm speaking in their favor, but I'm also speaking in favor of everyone else that enjoys Hummer Rock Beach. Um, there are several other passageways to the beach that these other people can use, and one. Next okay, but to I, and I, I appreciate this, but the, the, the hearing tonight is not about I the passageway. But I understand. Like right? I had to say something We're because it went way off. Okay, that way. and we, the, the objective is the right. project that's at and hand. I, the project it will do nothing but improve Th that area of the beach. Thank you. If that's what we want people to speak to is the project that is in front of us. <coughs> um, <coughs> Mr. Galvin. Yes, uh, thank you. It's Attorney Robert Galvin. I represent Peter and Anne Marie Huey. I know the history here. I was involved. I was the attorney that litigated the case. I was the one that prevailed at DEP and in the Superior Court, and it went to the Appeals Court as well. I want to stay away from the history. No one has been critical of the project itself. Everybody's talking about uh, the passageway and things that were done in the passageway. I think if the commission looks back in its file, um, the Hueys had a uh, order conditions. They were issued a certificate of compliance in 2010 for the work that was done on their property and in that area that's uh, adjoining right next to it uh, where there was vegetation. Um, the history here uh, involved the passageway located westerly of this property uh, and 
that's what the major fight was before. My clients were restoring ruts that were created by people that were driving over the dune, and that's where I think all of this comes from. They would prefer to have the ability to drive up there, but that wasn't the case. This was always a coastal dune. The road isn't even paved along Hummer Beach Road. There's overwash down here. The vegetation actually retards and actually helps the flood control. It doesn't uh, hurt the flood control. And anything that we're doing here will not impact the things that we previously uh, were given permission to do and for which we received a certificate of compliance. So if you look at the, if the plan from the prior uh, authorization and you look at the certificate of compliance, you're gonna see that we were required to have that vegetation and now they're asking you to get rid of it. These issues have already been determined by the commission. They shouldn't be revisited. Thank you. Um, yes, sir. John Bolton, 72 Old Forge Road. I'm not in the butter, but I've seen the plans and I support the project. And as to the improvements and the new improvement being more at risk, as far as I'm concerned, the elevation of the improvements and putting them on piers makes them more protected than they were before. And the garage <coughs> is existing. What somebody has in the garage, you couldn't control it now as it exists. Yes, and you the garage control. less subject to you know, flooding issues, et cetera. So I think you want the garage makes an overall improvement for the property. <laughs> Thank you. John Bullen, you um, Anybody else? A couple of questions, Bob. So the sauna tubes that support the deck are in the V zone? Some of them are, yes. Is that compliant in a V zone area? I, I'm not sure that it is. Well, um, that's close to what? These are not regular sonic tubes. They flat out of the bottom. They'll be like big That's my point. Yeah. So we're in a V zone on a barrier beach. I'm suggesting that, that we should look at that and talk with the building inspector that possibly those need to be either a driven pile or a helical piece or something like that. Typically, we're, we're looking to avoid that type of, of yeah. support, especially in a V zone. And I think that's something that maybe should be discussed. We don't want to go. Um, we can take a look at that, Amy, uh, and talk to Bob, but I'm almost certain that those are not compliant in that location. So you're gonna have to take a look. Okay. If, if I'm wrong, fine. If I'm, if I'm not, then figure out a different well, support. I think there is something in there about not having a base. Right. So, I mean, I don't know what you're And it's also as the depth, the scour, but you're in a V-zone area. Now, I know that the house is not, but the deck is, and the deck's new. So I think you need to look at that and figure out if that foundation or that support for the deck is compliant. Um, with regard to the garage, I think it's a, there's a benefit. Obviously, it's a little bit larger area. Doug pointed out the, the area being a little bit larger. But by the same token, now there's no con the concrete slab is going to be removed, right. correct? So this will be up on piers and be open underneath. I mean, I'm looking at a plant, a picture of the house. It shows no gutters, so basically that water is going to fall from from that and 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 not be subject to flooding, um, and it can even flow back under the house. So um, we have in the past put a condition in that people should keep certain things out of a garage, or they have to be contained. I'm not sure how effective that can really be. Um, but I think we can go back to look at some old orders. Yeah, we have. We had nothing flammable. See whether or not the flammables can yeah, that kind of thing. All that Make sure that that's garage. up in the garage and not under the house and, right. and that sort of thing. So I think we have some stuff that could go into an order <coughs> that would be helpful. Right. And Frank, just as, as far as the structurals go, we just were delivered those. Yesterday, I believe. Right. So I have I haven't really studied those at all. All the more reason to, yeah. to make sure we review that. But I my um, belief is that they're driven wooden piers in that mm, That's system. not what I'm seeing. Um, okay, so I, I he's, he's got the structural that. there. Right. So so the condition would be for a compliant plan. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a few other things that they ha have to get us anyway. So we'd be continuing tonight. Yeah. Okay. With regard to the, the concerns for erosion and vegetation, I think that is important. You know, we see overwash all the time. We've been pushed by DEP, and we endorse it, that plantings 
be done wherever they can possibly be done. The more vegetation that can stabilize that bank, the better. And, and I would discourage removal uh, of any of that. And anything that can be added around the property or the house or something is, seems to be an, an advantage to stabilizing Everybody. the beach. So um, making sure that in the process of doing this work, moving equipment and all that stuff, that anything that is to stabilize gets re um, revegetated. I mean, you're going to have equipment that you're going to have to get out front. Um, there's certainly going to be things that are damaged or, or, or at least altered. Is there any sort of um, erosion control proposed anywhere? There's nothing on the plan, no. I'm not sure where it would be practical, but it's probably... No, it's all it's flat it's and sand. I'm not sure it's yeah. going to... But we also want to make sure that any is, disturbances the stay on property. Yep. Yep. You know, sometimes even if it yep. winds up just being a silt fence, yep. to make sure that um, that any that all the activity stays on the on the property. Um, Where would you want the silt fence on three sides, or just along the parallel to the water? No, we don't want anything to go on the neighbor's property either. Right. Maybe, maybe three sides? And we can show it on the plan. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it goes up to a seawall, so there's really no point to that. So if it ran just the two property lines, lines. Um, yeah. I think that's a reasonable that's no way to do And you're going to need access for machinery to come in off the street. street so. So. I'd like to see BMPs for the, how they're going to do the installation once we figure out what what the structural are going to look like. Okay. He's just... It's Alfred. Yeah. Oh, he's going to have some in my water. So maybe, Heidi or Bob, you can work that up a little bit and just s a general how the process is going to go forward and... and remove. on the piers? Or well, you got the, you're going to demolish the garage and remove the garage. There's going to be a dumpster. Um, all that sort of thing. After that area is dug up, it needs to be stabilized. You know, there's excavation for the supports, that sort of thing. All that stuff should be addressed. In a minute. No, I'm all set. I'm just stretching. How did I have my chance to weigh in? Anybody else? No. Just yes, ma'am. Quick question. The garage is one level. There is no level on top of the garage that would be for an apartment or anything like that. It's just one level garage. Is that correct? Well, we have half a story under the roof line and it's storage. Storage. Yeah. But no one would ever live there. No. No, okay. it's storage. It's a garage. Yes. Yeah. A and real garage. Traditional, I, I, left, I gave someone, the drawings were up there. Yep, we have them. It. Yeah. It's just a... A peat roof, yeah. water out, and have some storage. Right. So it's not like any normal garage. It's a normal garage. Yeah, we, we didn't want to do a flat roof. That would be no, ridiculous in no. this area with water. Yeah. <coughs> I think what she was asking, if I'm wrong, please correct me. You're not putting an apartment up no, there. No. Okay. The so height of the garage is what? Like from the. From well, the, I have the drawings here. I, can, I couldn't tell from the drawings how tall it was with everything. It looks like it's about 18 feet off the uh, off, off no off the foundation. So maybe 20. 20 feet off, but I have you know a minimum 10 feet inside to get my um, yeah. my garage. So, so it's so approximately 22. But that's only you know at the peak. Yeah, but the ramp is right is on their property from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah. it does not go into, into the passageway. Right. So at the peak of the roof, I've got, you know, eight and a half feet, so I mean, I can stand in the middle, mm -hmm. but not You can't do high. anything else. No. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, there's a letter that you wrote in January of 05, stating that there's no re no re uh, this so vegetation fine. has been accomplished, okay? Here's the original joint showing all the grass and stuff all around this garage and the area, which is no longer there. Right. And then the only record in the file regarding the inspection prior to the COC was a letter that Amy Russell wrote, and I'll 
quote, Mr. Kliss has determined that the on-site plantings which are required in the order of conditions were insufficient. Therefore, Mr. Huey has agreed to plant grass along the southerly side of his house and allow a dune to establish. But the dune that he established is in the road and not on his property. Is this something you want in the in the please thank you the, the commission malicious or anybody in this, in this commission would never order anybody to do something outside of their property line that whole area is still there okay thank you bob do you want to come back on september 9th or the 30th will you have all this I'm material or do you want to go into October? I'm no, 30th of September. 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 This is our last meeting of August. So I have September 9th for the 30th open. But you have to have all that info in 10 days prior. A week. Yeah. A week. In a week. Where are we getting this 10 days all of a sudden? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. 10 day appeal. <laughs> yeah. So. The ninth, though, a actually, that gives you some time. Well, we'll the ninth is three weeks. weeks. Fish and yeah. Wildlife can get their response in by then. Oh, yeah. I mean, so maybe you can continue to the ninth, and if you don't have it, continue it out. Is that all right? That's what we'd like to do then, please. Yeah. Okay. Take a motion. Yeah, I'm going to make a motion that we continue. Give me a second here. 86 Hummer Rock B.